Hi, Bob Greenier here, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So I didn't get a chance to look at the Echo Fuel Sample 2 that we got the second time we went to India last year from Suhas Ralkar. It had spent a long time uh, under the watch of the masked Logitech 910C camera looking for strange radiation, which indeed it did find. And also, uh, we saw evidence of strange radiation and what it can do to PET, both in the form of directly in contact with the fuel sample, and also with respect to uh, a distance away from the fuel container. Anyway, uh, the other day I took a bunch of photos and in the light of everything that we're seeing in other samples uh, which seem to be in the same technology family, I thought I would look more detail at this. The reason was when, when I picked it up from the university the other day, uh, because we weren't able to test it, there wasn't enough time, but when I picked it up I opened the case and I just thought, oh my god, what am I looking at here? So I saw this shape where it would appear that a part of the crust that was in contact with the pet, uh, so it's this area here, uh, was in contact all the way around here with the actual pet bottle. Uh, part of it had just basically gone or, or fallen away. And I just thought, hmm, that could be interesting. So I took a bunch of photos uh, uh, early in the week, and I've just got round to... Uh, reviewing them and uh, going into detail and I can't even believe what I'm looking at. Uh, now it might not be immediately obvious to you uh, but I'm going to zoom in in a little while. But essentially what you have is you have these spheres in these cavities uh, all the way around here um, around the perimeter and also you have one here with this sort of bridge coming to it and then you have another one in here and your whole bunch in here. And then you can find them and I will share the full resolution images. You can see there's smaller ones all over. But I want to look into this one, these ones down here, this one over here, and the ones that are running around the perimeter. And draw your attention to uh, other aspects. So firstly, I'm going to zoom in to uh, this group over here, which are in their own cavities. And this is typical. These, what I'm calling spheres, appear to be in their own little cavities. Um, uh, and you can see there is one here, and one here, and so on. And when you look at the actual um, images that will be available uh, in uh, high bit depth uh, in uh, the links to the YouTube video, uh, you'll be able to explore them uh, uh, in a little bit more detail. So there's another one here. Uh, this sphere here, and it's in a large cavity here. And so I'm I'm learning about uh, stack focusing, and so I hope to be able to take uh, some other shots of this where I'm taking a number of steps. I'm going to modify my 7D with some software called Magic Lantern, which will allow me to get it to automatically take a whole bunch of different focal change steps and then composite them so that we can start to see these kind of features with more... Uh, uh, fidelity. Uh, but essentially, this sphere here is in a cavity, and we see this all over the place. So there's actually another sphere here. Uh, then, what I found absolutely amazing uh, is that if you look at this sphere here, this sphere here, this sphere here, this sphere here, what you see, uh, and it may not be clear on the contrast of this, but you can see it clearly on the uh, image itself, is you can see this sphere has these kind of strange radiation tracks going off at this angle. And then this sphere has these strange radiation tracks going off at this angle. And then this sphere has these strange radiation going off. And then this sphere has kind of some, some sort of interaction going over here to something over here, maybe. And then you've got these tracks coming off here. And... Uh, again, down here, you have the sphere, and then you have the tracks coming off at an angle. And it's on this perimeter line that's kind of broken away, and the material is kind of like gone somewhere. Um, and it's absolutely astonishing to me. And I suspect that if we were meticulous about taking this sample apart, 
then I would find that the strange radiation tracks that are around in other areas may well have a sphere underneath them. This, to me, is one of the most interesting things I've seen in the last couple of years. Uh, I'm going to try and zoom in so maybe you, you can get a bit more contrast. So here's our so-called sphere. Let's go right into that. Here's our so-called sphere. And this material is stacked on top and going away. The rest of the le level is below and it has a cavity that it's living in. Let's come up here. Here we have a sphere, so-called sphere, and then these uh, strange radiation tracks coming off all in the same direction. A sphere here coming off. It's not quite aligned in this case, but there seems to be some interaction with this sphere over here. Uh, and it almost looks like a double sphere to a certain extent, but it might just be the, the fact that I've got lighting coming from both sides. But there does seem to be <laughs> this thing pointing to this sphere. What is going on? Hmm, I wonder what it could be. <laughs> Here we go. We have a sphere, right? And we have, not only do we have these lines coming off, we have these triangles. Look, the triangles. Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. Very, very, very interesting. So, yeah, we have another sphere here, and we've got our lines coming off. We've got another sphere here, and it's on this perimeter wall, and the lines are coming off at this angle. Very, very, very interesting. Honestly, this is probably one of the most interesting things I've seen in Lena uh, during my experience over the last several years. Um, it's not so clear... And I'm looking forward to getting better resolution here, but you can see this ring in a cavity. The, the balls are in cavities. Uh, we've got another ball here. It's in a cavity. We've got a ball here. It's in a cavity. There's a little ball there. It's in a cavity. This one's very clear here. I mean, maybe I can zoom into that. You have a ball, and it's in a cavity. So, really... Wow, this one's very striking because the fact that the, the ball is there, then it's the cavity underneath it, then the kind of level playing field, and then on top it has these areas where <laughs> the lines are just coming off. Absolutely stunning, stunning. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just totally amazed with the correlation between Hutchison, Echo, Lion, uh, and, and Nova. Really, it's, you know, just incredible. Now here's another shot uh, and I imagine you see these strange radiation marks coming down here. I imagine somewhere here there are these balls but they're under this line but what I wanted to draw your attention to is this wonderful sort of curved uh, structure over here and I'm going to draw the camera uh, view right the way in there. So first up really is, I don't know if you can see here, but there, there appears to be these spheres that are in the crack and they're kind of equidistant apart as you go along. Equidistant apart. And then all the way down this ravine, as it were, you've got your spheres. Doink, 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 doink. <laughs> it's absolutely fascinating. And I can't wait to get um, the opportunity uh, to look at this and, and and maybe we can put the whole sample in and get some really good resolution on on what's going on with these spheres and these tracks coming off and, and really get some understanding of what the shape of these tracks are and hopefully because this is mostly metals uh, it should be good under the SEM and we should get some really good detail and hopefully also when when I get the microscope add-on to my S7 uh, maybe later this week or n early next week, I may be, a be able to have a look at these features in colour and really get into them. But, uh, you know, actually extracting one of these spheres, which we also see on many of the Hutchison samples and, and the Lion uh, reactor samples, uh, and seeing what they are, I think that's going to be fascinating. I predict they are going to be uh, iron-rich, maybe with nickel-copper uh, uh, and zinc in there but I reckon they're going to be very iron rich 
and uh, if not even more interesting because as we know from the original uh, sample that we got uh, of the echo fuel it had a very high concentration of lead now this is not unexpected given all of the history in this science uh, but we might see even more interesting things in these spheres because this sample if you recall was very active with producing strange radiation and um, yeah, anyway, I could wax lyrical about what I'm seeing right now. Uh, uh, it's just so, so exciting. It's just so exciting, really. Um, this, for me, is a, just a wonderful journey into real science and, and just science that you can just, just, just there. It's just there. Um, anyway, I'm going to get these images out to you and this video as soon as possible. So thank you for your time.